Hey everyone, this is Randy from BibleBuyingGuide.com. Today I'm taking a look at a new Bible from Humble Lamb called His Story. And their first edition is in the 2020 NASB. And I have it in Fox Orange. It comes in a really sturdy box. I love that box. It matches the cover, at least the Fox Orange does. I don't know about the others, I haven't looked. And gives you a little bit of information there. It comes wrapped, just like any premium edition would. There's the Fox Orange. Excellent green. Pronounced green, you can feel that. Now the, the uh, but uh, nothing printed on the front, perimeter stitching. Not much yap, it's not really a, a yap edition. And then we've got four raised hubs with the Word of God printed on the spine horizontally. Nothing printed on the front or back. And then edge line liner. The edge line liner also is leather and has a pronounced green. I'm not sure what the leather is, but it has a pronounced green with gilt line. And then the information, instead of being printed on the cover, is printed on the inside. And it has His Story, New American Standard Bible, and then Humble Lamb logo. And then the back, first print edition, Meridian Goatskin, individually handcrafted. And then there's the end, edge line tab. The edge line tab is kind of large for the size of this Bible. Uh, we'll look at the size in just a little bit, but little bit large, a little bit stiff. We have a couple of thick end sheets and then presentation page. 32 GSM paper with that and it's coated so it feels like premium paper. I actually thought it was 36 GSM <laughs> because of how um, because of that coating. Decently opaque, easy enough to turn and here's our information. It is made in China. Now there are a few errors in here not in the text but in the extras and here's one of them, um, authorized King James Version. But it, it comes with an 8.5 Milo serif, printed, printed and handbound in China. And they do provide a free, free Bibles, food, and humanitarian assistance by buying one of these. Now they've said, they, they posted on the Facebook page where some errors are, and they mention Leviticus being misspelled in the index. The other error is in in uh, the book of Revelation, at the very last, at the end of Revelation, two of the uh, Gustave Doré images are repeated from a previous one. And there are 220 Gustave Doré images, if I remember correctly. And as you can see, it does have a lot of decorative drop caps. And the drop caps apply to the section heading, not the text. And they're black with a little bit of color inside. They look interesting. It's kind of hard to see some of the definition inside because we do have a lot of black in there. But they do look good. Smith sewn, of course. Just like any good goat skin edition would be. It does stay open fairly well for how large that edge line tab is it's kind of surprised every book has a blank page title with the title at the bottom of the page and then there's our text the 8.5 milo actually looks pretty good slight bit of variation from one page to another but not much just enough for me to mention it and I only noticed because I was looking for it. Here's the Gustave Doré images. Now these are done differently than, than they've been done in some of the other Humble Lamb Bibles. These, they don't take the full page. They take uh, three-fourths of the page. And they provide the reference at the bottom. Now the layout is a little bit unique. Single column paragraph. And it has, you know, poetic setting and all this. Uh, Old Testament quotes in all caps. Things along that line. The standard uh, NESB formatting but laying it out on the page we have cross references in the outer margin and then the section heading has a drop cap now the references apply to that section heading so in this case we only have one on the page and, and when they spill over there's too many to fit in the margin they'll be placed under the text we'll see that as we go also this does include the 95,000 cross-references from Lockman, and it includes the full set of footnotes. So it, all of that is here. So if you're familiar with any 
large Lockman reference edition this matches. Now across the top we have the reference in the outer margin. Across the bottom in the footer we have the page number and then we have a page summary. I like the way they've done this. The images look really good. Gustav Doré images. You can see a little bit on the back side of the page where it's darker where that image is. Still readable but it is very noticeable as you can see here. Poetry looks really good. And here's one of the unique designs of this Bible. Uh, the references are placed as far at the bottom of the page as possible for each section. Where there are no references, the text takes the width of the page. And then as you can see, chapter numbers are actually marked in the margin in a smaller font. A little bit more difficult to see. You have to look for them. So this does give you two different widths for the uh, for the text and in some places it goes back and forth like we have the longer width shorter width longer width shorter width so you'll see that quite a bit it's more prominent on pages that have a lot of section headings or have a lot of references and you'll, you'll see that as we go it is unique it does make the page look a little bit busy at times, but reading it is not as big of a, is not really an issue. And as you can see, this, this edition has the four edge art, art gilt, using pointillism. And now this is not a Gustave Doré artwork. This is, this is from someone that they commissioned to draw that. Here's an example of a lot of drop caps on a page because we have four different section headings. And so we go back and forth from drop cap, you know, full width line, narrower line with references, and we go back and forth. This is some of my favorite paper in any Bible. I like this. Does seem to be printed with line matching. And does line up well. The only show through that's really noticeable mostly is the, the back side of an, of an image that stands out. Other than that, we'll see lines in poetic setting. And sometimes poetic setting is a little bit awkward, like in this, in this position we have where we have no references at first, and then we have references after. And so we have an offset poetic uh, positioning. Personally, I think I would have liked to have seen it line up. It looks better, in my opinion, in prose than it does in poetry. And there are a few places in poetry that look a little bit awkward. Here's an example of the two different offsets. And I think this still would have lined up on the page this way if they had done it like this. Now we have a couple of places where there's just one word. Because what they do is they go all the way to the edge of the page and then it wraps rather than breaking it in individual places and they're mostly that's okay there are a few though that get a little bit a little bit awkward I'll show you one let's go to Psalm 119 one of my favorite Psalms now here they've used a hyphen I think it would have been better to have divided this this phrase so that you place a couple of words underneath this instead of hyphenating and put command on one line and mints on the other that's just my opinion here's another so it's, it is common all through here so poetry is not always divided in good places a lot of times it is though just a few times where it wraps if you're familiar with Gustave Doré then you'll you'll understand the kind of uh, illustrations that there are they're close to the verses they correspond to now it's hard to see might not come across well on camera but the words of Christ are in blue we have some blue here and we have some blue here and it is really hard to see in certain lighting here's some blue so you can actually read this and not even realize it's there depending on your lighting right here I'm I'm able to notice it it doesn't stand out and for some people, that's good. Other people would prefer that to stand out quite a bit. 
here's a, a case where we have a lot of decorative drop caps. There's five on a two-page spread. And you, you can see they have different colors. I didn't see any information as to what the colors refer to. But they do all have a little splotch of color in there. And there is one, one place back here. I'll show you. There's a lot in Revelation. So some pages have more than others because there's a lot of section headings. So it can look busy. The other error that I've noticed here is Revelation 18.5. They use this image, Gustave Doré. And then also over here in 20 and 21, they use the same image. So they've just repeated that image two more times. These were meant to be different images. Of course, you know, they're a small... They're a small publisher. They're not going to be able to, you know, to, to change that easily. They're not going to be able to, you know, make exchanges and things because of that. It's just the way it is. They're a small publisher. I understand that. And then in the very back, we have the Humble Lamb maps on thick semi-gloss paper. I like these colors. These look good. They look excellent. A little bit hard to read some of this so if you're if, if you need glasses like I do some of it's kind of hard to see and the same can be said too of the references and things the reference keys in the text they're kind of small but they're not too small I don't have any issues telling you what the references are so let's take a look at the weight and size and this is a hand size edition. The overall size is about five and a half. The trim size is four and a half. And then seven and three quarters. And then trim size seven. And then thickness kind of surprised me. It's two inches thick. Normally I don't like a Bible that thick. This feels balanced for some reason. I don't understand it, but and I don't have any issues holding it open. The text doesn't go too far into the gutter. They've given enough space in the gutter that it, you don't lose the text. You will, while holding it, I, I don't like to, I kind of like to hold mine up like this when I'm reading. So I'll sort of want to roll it to one side and, and have a flat part of the page, then roll to the other side a little bit. Not always, though. I mean, it, it's, it's easy enough to read. This is excellent for carrying, for reading. And let's see the, well, it's two pounds of one ounce. And it has three ribbons wide ribbons they look they're, they're, they work well for this bible i like that so that's a good hand size edition I, I feel like it's easy enough to read the page does look busy at first but i still feel like it's easy enough to read once you get to reading it i would like to see things um like poetry i would like to see poetry lined up regardless of of what space we have i feel like it that works better for prose than it does in poetry I don't really find it too distracting. It's just a design choice they went with and it is unique. The section headings, drop caps for the section headings, can cause a lot of drop caps on a page. Which, you know, does make the page look a little busy. But once you're reading it, it's not as that big of a deal. And then you have a lot of lines with a single word. Other than that, I think it I think it's well executed for what they've done with it. Some places like this one has a lot more color in the drop caps. And then some of the other drop caps are more black. Like that one. Well, looks like they might have some yellow in there. So it's more prominent in some than it is in others. The blue I do find difficult to see. I would like to see the blue a little bit bolder or a little bit darker or brighter i like to see a little brighter i think bolder would make it uh, or i think darker would make it look more like black variation is minor very minor it's a nice little bible i like this a couple little tweaks i think i love the paper print quality is excellent even with a minor vari variation but i don't think most people would even notice that 
page can look a touch busy but it's it's fine blue could be a little bit brighter but so that, that's a good little hand size bible let's do some comparisons first i want to compare it to a couple of other humble lamb editions this is the new king james shepherd so if you're familiar with anything else from humble lamb this will get you an idea of what it's like now the shepherd is a larger bible Shepherd is noticeably larger, a lot larger, a little thinner, but not enough to really care. Then here is our layout. Paper is the same, although it seems to be a touch wider on the history, on his story. It does have a slight cream tone to it, which I like. This is my favorite color for paper. And this is also in my range of favorite color for paper. I per prefer slightly cream to pure white. That's just me. So let's take a look at the text and take a look at the Gustave Doré images. Now the shepherd has fewer. So let's go to Zechariah. So here we have the same image in both. And I'll zoom in. I feel like it's a little bit darker in his story, which I prefer. I think it's a little bit easier to read and see. And then just a quick look at the text. Might as well compare blue letter. So there's blue letter to blue letter. I do find the shepherd blue easier to see, easier to notice that it's blue. And shepherd has a cleaner overall uh, design. But I do like what they've done with his story but that just gives you an idea of what they look like and the size of the font comparison next is the lion and this one is a KJV and it's so different uh, but I want to include it because I know someone will ask really not a lot of similarities between the two but if you're familiar with, with one then it'll help you to understand the other so footprint on it is the same as the shepherd Grain is not as pronounced for the leather. And then it is a traditional double column KJV with larger font, Milo for all these. Just a lot larger font. And then it also has Gustave Doré images, not as many. They put a lot more in his story. So there's Matthew 15. And here we have the same image in both. And just like with Shepard, the lion is lighter in color. I like the darker in his story. Here's how they compare. And then also both are blue letter editions. So here's blue compared to blue. And it's really hard to tell that either are blue. The blue in lion is a little bit lighter. The, the entire text is a little bit lighter. I, I find that the, the text in his story is a little bit bolder and easier to read, in my opinion. Even though Lion is a larger font, it's not, not as bold as I'd like. So that's how they compare. Let's compare to a few other NASBs. First is the 2020 NASB, Large Print Compact Bible. Uh, in prime edition from Lockman. Now this one has the same footprint, but it's a lot thinner. And then thinner paper, but a larger font. And this one also does not have references, but it does include footnotes. So here's Psalms 120 in both editions. Now the Lockman is a black letter edition. A little bit larger font, but not quite as dark as his as his story. Still, the um, the Lockman does have a cleaner text, but it doesn't have as much white space. There's a little bit more white space in his story. And white space makes a big difference. So there, there's how they compare. That's a good little hand-sized Bible, though. It's, that's, that's one of my favorite Lockmans. 
Now this one is a 95 in ESB, but it is one of my favorite Bibles in every translation that it's available in. And then of course is the Clarion hand size Bible. Same footprint, slightly thinner, single column layout, reference edition with references in the outer margin. Thinner paper is the 28 GSM Indopake. Here's how they compare. Same page on both. The font in the Clarion is slightly larger. This is an 8.5 Milo versus 8.75 Lexicon. And now this also has the slight cream color, a little bit creamier color in the, the paper itself, which I prefer over the whiter color in his, in his story. But still, this is a good paper. There's how they compare. Both are excellent editions. So that is my quick look at his story in Fox Orange from Humble Lamb. I like the size of this. I like the shape of it. I'm actually surprised how much I like the thickness. I usually don't like a thick Bible, but this, for some reason, this one feels balanced. It feels right. Pages can be a touch busy, but still readable enough. I think some minor tweaks would make it quite a bit better. But I still feel like it's it's a good enough addition the way it is. Some small little things I would change myself, but that, that's me being picky. So Humble Lamb did supply this in exchange for an honest review. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll place links where you can make a purchase if you're interested. Also a link to the written review with even more detail because my writing is always more detailed than my speaking. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.